Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching videos of thermodynamics in English. Today is Saturday and we are seeing Saturday special English lectures. Okay, you know that this is the only platform where you are getting the Hindi videos and English videos simultaneously. On Tuesday, we are releasing the Hindi videos and on the Saturday, we are publishing the English lectures. So, whatever you are the viewers, you can see our lectures very clearly. Okay. So, today is Saturday and English video is done. So, we are seeing thermodynamics lecture. In our last lecture, we have seen the adiabatic and the isothermal process and done several type of questions. Now, there is an important effect that we have to study that is joule thomson effect. Okay. So, first of all, understand its basic definition. What is its definition? Then we will clear all the terms behind it. Okay. So, what is joule thomson effect? When a real gas is allowed to pass adiabatically. Adiabatically means in whole the process there is no exchange of heat from the system. Okay. Through the fine orifices of porous plug from high pressure region to a low pressure region. It means when a real gas is passed from a system from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure in the adiabatic way, then there is a sudden drop of temperature. Then the temperature of the system will decrease. Okay. This effect is known as joule thomson effect. Okay. This is seen in all the cases, but sometimes like in the hydrogen or in the helium, there is rise in the temperature. Okay. So, these are two exceptions where we see rise in temperature, but in all other cases of the real gases, we see a sudden drop in the temperature. Whenever we are passing the real gas through the porous plug from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure in the adiabatic conditions. Okay. And another thing that you should study is that joule thomson effect is isoenthalpic process. It means in all the process, the enthalpy will remain same. Okay. okay. Now see its instrumentation. Actually, in the joule thomson effect, we take a system in which the walls are adiabatic. Okay. Means to say this wall. This is our system and this is surrounded by the adiabatic walls. It means there is no exchange of heat through the system. Okay. Now see, this system is made up of two chambers. Okay. And these two chambers are divided by the porous plug. This is a porous plug. This is porous plug. Okay. And these are the pistons. This is the adiabatic wall because from here there is no exchange of heat. Okay. And this is one chamber where the pressure is P1 volume is V1 and temperature is T1. This is the another chamber where the pressure is P2, volume is V2 and temperature is T2. Okay. Now, see here. What we are doing here in this system. Okay. This is the chamber number 1. This is the chamber number 2. Okay. The gas is allowed to pass through this porous plug from the chamber 1 to chamber 2. It means from the region of the pressure P1 to the region of the pressure P2. Always remember this P1 is higher. Okay. It means the gas is moving from high pressure to low pressure. Okay. P1 is greater than P2. And the gas is allowed to pass through the porous plug from left to right maintaining the pressure P1 and P2 at the constant values. We have to put this P1 and P2 constant. Okay. Now see. This process is adiabatic. We have told that this process is adiabatic because the system is surrounded by the adiabatic walls. These are the adiabatic walls. Okay. So, when the process is adiabatic, it means Q will be equal to zero. Okay. So, from the first law of thermodynamics, we can say that W will be equal to del U. Right. So, work involved on the left hand side will be given by P1, V2 minus V1. Okay. And V2 here will be equal to 0. Okay. In this chamber, V2 will be equal to 0. So, we will write this work involved is equal to P1, V1. Similarly, the work involved on the right hand side will be equal to minus P2, V2. 
okay so the network the network then will be given by minus p2 v2 plus p1 v1 now we know that del u is equal to w okay so del u means u2 minus u1 will be equal to minus p2 v2 plus p1 v1 okay so u2 plus p2 v2 will be equal to u1 plus p1 v1 so we can say this thing you know this is equal to enthalpy it means h2 this will be equal to h1 so h2 will be equal to h1 it means the enthalpy of the gas which has moved across the porous plug will remain unchanged or we can call that the joule thomson effect or joule thomson expansion is an isoenthalpic process all right now the next thing is the joule thomson coefficient joule thomson coefficient means the magnitude of joule thomson effect is expressed in a term that is called the joule thomson coefficient and we represent it by mu we call it mu jt okay this is joule thomson coefficient actually mu jt is the rate of change in temperature with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy if we write it in the mathematical form then how we can write mu jt will be equal to del t it means change in the temperature with respect to pressure so we will write del p and this is happening at constant enthalpy so right here h okay now what is asked in the question papers to you you will have to find out the joule thomson coefficients in the different types of the terms in the easily determinable derivative terms okay so we will see all of them one by one okay see here first of all we are starting it with the enthalpy we know enthalpy h is a state function so we can write it as a function of temperature and pressure right as it is a state function it will be a perfect differential so we can write dh is equal to del h upon del t at constant p dt plus del h upon del p at constant t dp okay now how we will get it this we have seen in our previous lectures when i have started the thermodynamics i have given you all the types of the fundamentals of thermodynamics okay so if you have not seen that videos you can see them you can find out their links in the description box okay now in the joule thomson effect we know in joule thomson effect dh is equal to 0 okay so we can write this del h upon del t at constant p dt plus del h upon del p at constant t dp will be equal to 0 right now what we have to do divide this equation by dp okay and impose the conditions of constant enthalpy so what we are getting we are getting del h upon del t at constant p del t upon del p at constant h will be equal to del h plus del h upon del p at constant t is equal to 0 okay now we know that del h upon del t at constant p is equal to cp okay and we know del t upon del p at constant h is equal to mu joule thomson coefficient okay so we can put these values so what we are getting we are getting del h upon del p at constant t plus mu cp is equal to 0 or what we can write we can write mu will be equal to minus 1 upon cp del h upon del p at constant t okay so this is the value of mu or joule thomson coefficient in the terms of cp and del h upon del p at constant t this is our one equation now we know according to the second 
equation of a state. We have studied about the second equation of a state. We know that del h upon del p at constant t is equal to minus t del v upon del t at constant p plus v. Okay. So you can put this value of del h upon del p at constant t in our equation number 1. Okay. So what we are getting? Mu j t will be equal to minus 1 upon c p and put this value minus t del v upon del t at constant p plus v. This will be equal to 1 upon cp minus 2 minus will cancel out t del v upon del t at constant p minus v. Okay. This is our equation number 2. Okay. We will use this equation. So, this will be equal to we can take this t outside. We are taking this t outside. So, we are getting t upon cp del v upon del t at constant p minus v upon cp. Okay. So, this mu j t will be equal to v upon cp t upon v del v upon del t at constant p minus 1. Okay. And this term we know 1 upon v del v upon del t at constant p. This is equal to alpha. Okay. So, we can write here alpha. So, v upon cp t alpha minus 1 means to say mu j t is equal to v upon cp t alpha minus 1. This is the value of mu j t in the terms of alpha. Okay. This is in the terms of alpha. So, this is the another value of mu j t that you can find out. This is in the terms of alpha. Now, we will use this equation for finding out the joule Thomson coefficient of the ideal gas and the joule Thomson coefficient of the real gas. Now, we are finding out the joule Thomson coefficient for the ideal gas. We know PV is equal to nRT and we need to know del V upon del T at constant P. So, V will be equal to nRT upon P, right? So, del V upon del T at constant pressure will be equal to nR upon P. Now, we can put this value in our equation number 2. So, what we are getting? Mu J T is equal to T nR upon P minus V upon Cp. Okay. Now, we know nRT upon P is equal to V. So, we can put on this place V. So, what we are getting? V minus V upon Cp. It means this is equal to 0. Or what we can say mu j t is equal to 0. It means for the ideal gas, the joule Thomson coefficient is equal to 0. Or the temperature of such a gas will not suffer any change in joule Thomson experiment. It means when an ideal gas is passed through a porous plug adiabatically, from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure, there will be no change in temperature. It will neither get cooling nor it will get heat up. Okay. Now see the joule Thomson coefficient for a real gas or a Van der Waal gas. For Van der Waal gas, we know del H upon del P at constant T is equal to B minus 2A upon RT. This we have derived in our previous lectures. Okay, You can see our lectures of the equation of states where you will get these things. Okay, So, mu j t will be equal to now see our equation number 1 Okay, and put their value. So, minus 1 upon c p b minus 2 a upon r t. So, what we are getting? Mu j t is equal to 1 upon Cp 2A upon Rt minus P. Means to say for the real gas, the Joule Thomson coefficient may be positive, may be negative or it may be 0. 
this whole thing depends upon the temperature and pressure of the gas okay we know that mu z t first of all we have studied that mu z t is equal to del t upon del p at constant h this is according to the definition okay and we know this dp dp is always negative because in the joule thomson effect we are flowing the gas from a region of high pressure to low pressure it means pressure is decreasing so it will be negative now the whole things depends upon the value of del t okay when del t or dt is negative when dt is negative the first condition is that the temperature is decreasing it means t2 is lesser than t1 then this del t upon del p at constant h will be positive okay this value will be now positive because dp is negative and dt is also negative so del t upon del p at constant h will be positive it means gas will show cooling effect okay now the second condition may be when dt is positive in this condition we can say t2 is greater than t1 or we can say del t upon del p at constant h will be negative because dp is negative but dt is positive so this whole term will be negative or we can say in this condition gas will show heating effect okay third condition may be when t2 is equal to t1 or dt is zero in that condition mu jt will be equal to zero right because in this condition dt is equal to zero so this term del t upon del p at constant h will be equal to zero it means the gas will neither show cooling nor heating effect okay so this temperature this temperature at which a gas shows neither heating nor cooling is known as the inversion temperature so what we can write what is inversion temperature a temperature at which a gas shows neither heating nor cooling in joule thomson conditions okay this temperature is known as the inversion temperature and it is shown by ti okay so at this temperature mu jt will be equal to 0 it means we can write mu jt is equal to we have seen vcp t upon v del v upon del t at constant pressure minus 1 this was okay this will be equal to 0 so we can write ti is equal to 1 upon 1 upon v del v upon del t at constant pressure when this is equal to 0 this t will be equal to ti okay so ti we can find out it will be equal to 1 upon 1 upon v del v upon del t at constant p and this term we know is equal to alpha so this will be equal to 1 upon alpha or we can write ti is equal to 1 upon alpha right now if we have to find out this for the van der waal gases this is for the ideal gas for van der waal gases see here for van der waals gas we have seen that mu jt is equal to 1 upon cp 2a upon rt minus b okay and we know at inversion temperature at inversion temperature mu jt is equal to 0 so this one upon cp 2a upon r ti now we will write this temperature ti minus b will be equal to 0 okay and we know the cp cannot be equal to 0 okay cp cannot be equal to 0 so we can say 2a upon r ti minus b will be equal to 0 so ti will be equal to 2a upon rb this is the inversion temperature for the van der waal gases
Okay. So in this way, you have to do the Joule Thomson effect and all the calculations about it. Now the main thing is the questions. Which type of questions may be asked from this whole topic? So the questions we will see in our next lecture. If you are liking my videos, then please comment me so that I can understand what are you liking, what do you want. Okay. And if you are liking, then you can share these videos and share these, subscribe the channel and like the videos. Thank you.